to let that man know they were indebted to him for saving their life. And I'm sure we can all agree it was a great thing what Mr. Spencer did for those individuals. He had compassion on them, didn't he? But may I tell you, it's no comparison to what Jesus has done for each one of us. And there are some who show him the same attitude of ingratitude. Can I tell you tonight, we should live in continual thanksgiving. It shouldn't be something we only do when we come to church on Sundays and Wednesdays. It shouldn't be something we practice one time a year on the fourth Thursday of November. It shouldn't be something we only do when we feel like it, when we've experienced an improvement in some area of our existence. No, we should praise him every day, all throughout the day. He didn't have to save us. He didn't have to suffer for us. He didn't have to die for us. I said he didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. Aren't you glad for that church? Hallelujah. I'm getting right close. Look lastly at verses 15 and 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Consider not only a tragic congregation, not only a tremendous compassion, but lastly consider a thankful conversion. All 10 of these lepers lifted up their voices to get Jesus' attention, didn't they? But only one lifted up his voice to give Jesus adoration. And really, I'm afraid that's the way it is in a lot of our churches today. 90% are sitting idle, while only 10% are really giving him the glory. Hey, man, oh, these other nine, those men, they may have gotten new bodies, but this man got a new heart, didn't he? Instead of going to the priest, he became a priest. He built his altar at the feet of Jesus, offering him the sacrifice of thanksgiving. The Bible said he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. He fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. You know what that tells me tonight? That tells me true praise requires action. Amen. I get sick of hearing people say, you don't understand, preacher. I worship him in my own way. I'm backward. I'm timid. I'm shy. Amen. Well, I'd like to ask some of those same people, how do you act when your favorite sports team wins a big game? Isn't that right, sister? She's testifying about it earlier. Amen. How emotional do you ladies get when you find a good bargain at your favorite store? Amen. Oh, come on now. How do you respond when you men kill that big buck or catch that trophy fish? I want to tell you tonight, amen, when you really worship him like he deserves to be worshiped, it's going to be visible and it's going to be audible. You're going to break out of your comfort zone. You're not going to care how you look. You're not going to care what anybody thinks about you. You're going to lift your hands. You're going to lift your voice. And you're going to yell out a hallelujah, a thank you, Jesus, a glory to God. Amen. How about it tonight? Can we give the Lord some action? Can we show him a little praise while we stand and give him the glory? Woo! Let's stand and praise him like he deserves to be praised. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your name. You're the greatest. Hallelujah. He's worthy, isn't he? Amen, amen. Somebody come to music. I'm reminded of a little boy. He was from Dunkirk, France. I'm closing right here. But his father was in the British military during World War II. As you can imagine, that little boy was concerned about his father's well-being. So every day, the vicar, the pastor, would see him walk into the local church. He'd hear that boy pray for God to keep his hand upon his father to protect him during the war, you know. After the war was over, and it was announced the Allied forces had won. All those military men were sent home. That boy's father returned safe and sound. Isn't that great? They said the next day that pastor saw him coming back into the church. He stopped him. He said, son, what are you doing? He said, your father's home now, isn't he? That boy said, yes, sir. That's why I'm here. He said, every day I come to this church, 
He said, I'd ask for God to protect my father, to help him make it out of the war alive. He said, yesterday, Daddy came home, and I just come back to say thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's how we ought to do tonight, church. We ought to come down to this altar and say, Lord, I just come to say thank you. Hey man, I didn't come to file a complaint. I didn't let you know what's wrong in my life. I just come to say I praise you. Hey man, I'm appreciative of you. Hey man, we got any a lepers here tonight? Hey man, who can say I was lost, but I've been found. Hey man, I've been saved. I've been freed. I've been redeemed by the grace of God. Is there anybody that can come down to the altar and say, Lord, I just come to say thank you. Woo! Hallelujah! This altar's open tonight for everybody in this house. Is there anybody that's got something to praise him for? Is there anybody that can say, Lord, if you don't do anything else for me, you've done enough already. If you don't ever hear another prayer, if you don't meet another need you've done enough for me God you saved me you brought me out you delivered me from eternal damnation and I just come to lift you up a little bit higher than you already are is there anybody that's got thanksgiving in their heart tonight while we lift him up while we live on him for a little while church oh we praise your holy name it's your choice to rejoice. I hope you'll make the right choice tonight. I hope you'll choose to praise him. Woo! Just hit.